Hey guys, how's it going? So today, we're going to be talking about these new consoles. You know, I'm going to sort of clarify some things because there is a tremendous amount of wrong information out there about these consoles and just straight up people not knowing what they're talking about and just being not good uh, journalists and not good stewards to you guys to relay correct information. So... Uh, the gameplay is going to be Call of Duty World at War in the background. This is my favorite Call of Duty of all time. This one gets me gives me the most nostalgia feeling uh, when I play it. Just hearing the music and all that kind of stuff. Just, oh man, it just blows my mind still to this day. So, yeah. So, okay. So, first of all, since I was a young kid, I've really always challenged myself to be as accurate as possible. Um, I hated being wrong. Absolutely hated it. Uh, with a passion, I got embarrassed and ashamed when I tried to answer a question. It was the wrong answer. So from a very young age, I've done everything I can in my power to be the most accurate person I can. There's a guy that I work with who will will sit there and argue for like five minutes over how far away the moon is. And we're, we're arguing like 20,000 miles difference on like 230,000 miles, 250,000 miles. And it's just like, I want to be as accurate as possible. And I don't like inaccurate information. So the amount of inaccurate information that I've seen recently has really just, it's gotten me hot. Like it's gotten me mad when I'm watching these videos because I'm trying to consume all the content I can. I'm trying to consume everything that I can to do with these new consoles because I want to know, you know, I want to know stuff. I want to know when other people know and I want to bring my opinion. And because of the fact that I'm watching all these things and I'm watching all sides of it, I feel like I can offer a decent you know, factual representation of what we know. And I just can't stand watching these videos, even from people with hundreds of thousands of subscribers who make it, that's their, that's their day job. If you have 850,000 subscribers, that's your day job. And you probably make six figures doing it or close to that. So it's like, that's your full-time job, man. And you can't just read one article for 15 minutes and then make a whole video reporting to everybody on everything that you read. Like, the amount of research that I did on, on what I'm going to tell you guys, I did hours of research last night. Hours. And not only that, this is my fourth take of this video. And the last third take was 30 minutes long, and I still didn't cover all the information that I wanted to cover. So it's like, I have, a, I have a passion for that. I have a passion for the most accurate information, and I hope you guys understand that every time you watch one of my videos, that's what you're getting from me. You're not going to get some piece of crap that I just threw together in 10 minutes and put together. And, you know, I'm not just going to read one article and then uh, fire up my camera and make a thing. I mean, I'm like, I'm trying to provide accurate information. I'm, there's far more on the research side than it is on the uh, actual voiceover side. And the voiceover side takes me forever because I, I can't get everything I want into one, you know, one take. So I'm just going to briefly summarize. I'm going to skip. I, I had some other stuff, but I'm just going to skip over it because it's just, it's taken too long. So, um, if you're, what this is, is if I'm reading something and I'm, taking in that knowledge and then I'm reporting it to you guys and putting it into a piece like I am now, that's journalism is what that is. If it's news that I'm reporting, that's journalism. And that's the same with other tech channels, the same with other channels, other gaming channels. So a lot of them are not taking that seriously and they're just like throwing information out there that they think is true and it's just not. And it, it really, it's terrible because it makes it so that people don't believe the true stuff and it makes it so that uh, there are, you know, a lot of misinformation and people are misinformed, but you know what? At the same time, it creates a good opportunity for somebody like me to come out here and correct some of the stuff that I've heard people say, which is just driving me absolutely up the wall. So I'm just going to go through some brief history of the, of where this sort of console war started. Um, you know, in the nineties, it was all about Nintendo and then there was Sega and then Sony came into the mix later with the, with the PlayStation in the mid to late nineties. It's so like that was kind of the starting of it, but it wasn't really a console war, a true console war, until uh, Sony PS2 and Xbox OG. And even then, it was less of a war and more of like Mike Tyson punching out a fifth grader uh, with the Xbox OG, but um, we'll get there. So Sony launched the PS2 in 2000. Um, it, uh, it had a 300 megahertz CPU, which is 0.3 gigahertz, 32 megabytes of RAM, and only 4 megabytes of video RAM. So they made that. It was a custom CPU they made with Toshiba. Uh, they partnered with Toshiba because those sort of things take a huge investment. Um, and they sold 155 million units. 155 million. Actually insane. So the Xbox OG 
uh, Microsoft wanted to get on this action. Now, obviously, they had been designing this for years before because you can't just design something like this in a year, but uh, they had their eye on the, the gaming market and they thought they could deliver something that was more powerful. You know, maybe Microsoft was worried that Y2K was actually going to happen, so they started it in the 90s and they're like, eh, we'll just wait and see if the whole world burns up in 2000 and then we'll launch it after that. But in 2001, they launched the OG Xbox. And the OG Xbox had a 733 megahertz CPU, so twice as fast, 64 megabytes of RAM, twice as much RAM, and uh, NVIDIA graphics. Now, I was surprised to find they only sold 24 million units. I didn't realize it was that low, but they did. Um, in 2002, they launched Xbox Live, which became the most popular live service. Uh, Halo 2 launched a, a year or two later or whatever, and that became uh, the most played game on Xbox Live and the most played game online for a long time until uh, Modern Warfare 1 passed it in 2007 to early 2008 um and that record had stood from halo 2 for several years before it was broken by them um so over the course of the lifetime of the og xbox microsoft lost four billion dollars with a b four billion dollars they lost um and so they started looking at the next thing and that was the xbox 360 the xbox 360 was a 3.2 gigahertz cpu it was a three core cpu with six threads um, so we're getting more toward, like, kind of where we are now. And uh, they were developing that with IBM. Now, ironically, at the same time, IBM was also designing a chip with Toshiba and Sony, which was going to go in the PS3. And so Sony didn't know that at the time, but uh, or Xbox didn't know that at the time, and Sony didn't know that. So they, you know, they were both working with them together. And uh, that console had 512 megabytes of RAM. And the graphics were by ATI, which is a company that AMD bought in 2006, so they don't exist anymore. Um, they sold 84 million units of the 360. Um, initially, extremely hard to get. I was fortunate enough to get one right away, and I was the only person I knew that had one for several months. Like, all my friends would come over and we'd play, like, Call of Duty, or we'd play, uh, you know, even Halo, um, or, uh, like, Need for Speed, or we'd play uh, Oblivion, is what it was called. Anyway, so that was kind of cool, uh, but... They, had, they were so popular that they actually stole a bunch of exclusive titles. There were a bunch of titles that were supposed to be PlayStation exclusives. Uh, Devil May Cry, L.A. Noir, Grand Theft Auto, Metal Gear Solid, Tekken, uh, even Final Fantasy. Those were supposed to be Sony PlayStation exclusives, but because the 360 was doing so well, you know, and the PlayStation was not, they ended up going to uh, Xbox also. Um, so I can't mention the 360 without the Red Ring of Death. Uh, Red Ring of Death, you know, this is one of those issues that happens when you're making something that's very, very powerful and people are using it a lot and all that kind of stuff. And it basically, uh, it was a horrible thing. If, if any of you had a 360, you know what the Red Ring of Death is. Um, my first one, they fixed under warranty and then the previous and then the following like eight times it happened, I fixed it myself. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, so PS3 came out in 2006. So a year later in November. Um, 3.2 gigahertz processor from Sony, Toshiba, IBM. So very similar processor. Uh, 512 RAM. Uh, now they actually specified that this was 256 for the system, 256 for graphics. They didn't specify that in the Xbox 360. I couldn't find any info on that. But um, they also had NVIDIA graphics in there. So uh, the issue with this one was it launched at 599 and with a 60 gig hard drive and 499 with a 20 gig hard drive. Now they had some stuff that was ahead of their time. Obviously Blu-ray. Uh, was ahead of its time, uh, and it was such a big deal that uh, Microsoft actually came out with an add-on to the console called the HD DVD player that you could plug in uh, and play HD DVDs in. Uh, but uh, the, originally, the PS3 sold terribly, and it had a horribly negative reaction, way too expensive, had no good games because it was much harder to develop for. Um, and so by, by the end of 2007... A year later, Sony had lost... In, just in 2007, they lost $2 billion in one year. Um, in fact, some estimates say they were probably losing as much as $250 per console they were losing. Um, which is pretty epic. Um, that was really, you know, critical danger for Sony. Um, you know, I, I read some stuff about their CEO resigning uh, at that point, and... Some people speculated that it was due to the PlayStation's poor uh, performance and how much money they were losing, just absolutely hemorrhaging cash. Um, but some, some, you know, obviously the company said he was planning to retire for six months and stuff like that. So I don't know. You never know with those type of things. You don't know. You never really know who to trust. Um, now I thought this this was funny. They sold 87 million units. I didn't realize they were so close. But um, in the years, you know, 08, 09, 2010, all those times, like 
as they as their manufacturing process got much much cheaper they were able to really actually finally start making some profit and they're really able to just start marketing it and selling a ton of them and they really started to take off and developers had kind of figured out how to develop for it a little bit better but um yeah so they caught up real quick to 360 but the thing that was funniest to me was you know this this new console is going to be on the seven nanometer technology that's just a measurement of how close the transistors are and the, the distance on the chip seven nanometers is unfathomably small like legitimately unfathomably small um you know you're talking about billions with a b of transistors on a single chip it's like two inches by two inches or you know a couple hundred millimeters squared ridiculous um but they sh initially the reason it got so much cheaper for sony was because they switched to a 65 nanometer process <laughs> oh man you know, it's funny to look back at this kind of stuff because you just think like, man, where we are today, like we just take stuff for granted. We don't realize, but um, that just made me laugh. So um, anyway, so one of those things that you get to experience, uh, you know, with these console generations, if you guys were around then, you you know, you know, it was it was kind of a big deal. Uh, Sony's misstep became basically the death of them, almost the death of them. Uh, just by, you know, this slight malfunction thing with the price. They, they tried a little bit too hard to make the, pro the, to make the uh, product a little bit too powerful. And even though it was powerful, it's the same thing that Microsoft was doing. The, the only issue was Microsoft is a much larger company than Sony, and they're able to afford to take that loss. And they knew that, and they knew, you know, with their Xbox Live, they are making a lot of money on that. And so that sort of offset some of that, whereas the PlayStation didn't really have PlayStation Network. It didn't really come online until a little bit later. Um, you know, same thing, kind of like 2010 era. And so that was one of those things that just, uh, you know, it just, it's, it's Sony's little misstep cost them that generation. And eventually they made it all back uh, because of Sony's huge namesake. I mean, they sold six times as many or seven times as many PlayStation 2s as there were Xbox OGs. So they had that namesake. So as soon as it started to take off and people and the prices started to come down a little bit, people realized it was good and they, they went back to it. So, you know, uh, this leads us to where we are today. So both of those companies were, well, that's not true. This leads us to about 2010. And both of those companies, Microsoft and Sony, were just absolutely, absolutely blowing through cash, just hemorrhaging money. And so, you know, I've read reports previously of the Xbox 360 being sold at a loss for several years. So, you know, this was the last time we got an upgrade that big. And these guys really wanted to push the envelope as far as the performance. And it basically cost them a lot of money to do that. Um, but that was the biggest leap in gaming that we've had in a long time. I mean, think about playing a PS2 game and then playing a PS3 game. Or think about playing an OG Xbox game. Think about, like, Halo 1 versus games that were popular on the 360. Like, think about Halo 1 versus, like, you know, Black Ops 2 or something like that. Like, it's ridiculous to think those were made on the same... Uh, I mean, they weren't made on the same console, but to think, you know, they were only one generation apart. And so... This led them to the point where I watched this fun, absolutely phenomenal interview with Phil Spencer recently, which um, talked about how the silicon is the first thing they d d uh, decide on with a new console because it takes the longest. A lot of these take a lot of run-up time to be able to produce these things. So uh, around probably around the 2009-2010 time frame is when these guys would have been looking to create the new console. And at that time, they went with AMD. Because NVIDIA was getting too expensive, and Intel was too expensive, and IBM was also probably still too expensive. I don't even know if IBM was really doing that stuff anymore at that point. But So they, they looked to a cheaper alternative, and AMD provided that for them. And partially due to the fact that they wanted to make the boxes a little bit cheaper, and partially due to the fact that AMD didn't really have that good of a product to offer in 2010, 2011. By the time the consoles came out in 2013, they were drastically underpowered. They're virtually on this almost the same, um, but the CPU was slightly better on the the Xbox One. It was clocked a little bit higher, and the GPU was a little bit lower at 1.3 teraflops. Whereas the PS4 had a little bit lower CPU, but a little bit higher GPU at 1.8 teraflops. So, you know, they there were some some differences, and that leads me to where we are today. And that's why uh, they haven't released any any official like specs yet, like actual specifications. So. Um, around the same time, in 2013, when they were announcing these, there was a misstep by Microsoft this time around. And they said 
some rumors got out, some leaks got out that they were going to have this DRM, this digital rights management, where your console is going to have to be an always on internet connection. And if it didn't sign in every 24 hours to authenticate the games that you owned, that you wouldn't be able to play them. And it sort of took on a life of its own. And, you know, they didn't really come in and correct it. They, no one really talks too much about it. And they didn't do a very good job PR wise of managing it. And they just lost it. They lost the generation because of it. And you, know, you can say what you will, but that's what lost them the generation. The 360 and the PS3 were equal as far as popularity. And Microsoft shot themselves in the foot and they got outsold two to one by Sony this generation because they just straight up messed up. And they didn't handle it the right way and they didn't explain it the right way. And, you know, the, the question I asked my friend back in 2013 when this whole thing was going down was like, dude, it's 2013. Who doesn't have an always on internet connection? That was the question I always wanted to know. It was one of those things that people freaked out about. And I always wanted to know, how many of you guys who know this do not have an always-on internet connection? How many people were still running dial-up in 2013? Like, it just didn't make any sense to me. And I think it was just something that, you know, it was a little bit too far ahead of its time. They saw the digital thing coming, and I don't think a lot of people did. And, of course, now, you know, the digital games probably make up half the sales of games are digital, probably. So that was some good foresight on Microsoft's point, but they went a little too, a little too hard with it and didn't do a good enough job PR-wise of explaining it and, and making it seem like a feature. And so they lost the generation. And because of that, in some ways, we have them to thank for... We have that to thank for the Xbox One X because that's what uh, made them come back and say, hey, look, like we actually want to do something good here. You want to do something powerful. And yeah, so both of them are not revealing anything yet. So here's here's what we do know. We do know that they both are running on Zen 2 architecture and they're running on Navi GPU architecture. Uh, we know that they both will be 8K capable. And I have to stop here because this is specifically what I'm talking about earlier, which I talked a little bit more generally about at the beginning of the video. The thing that's getting the most attention right now on these consoles is the 8K thing. Like there's so many people making videos about 8K and this and that. And I just think everybody completely missed it because there's two groups of people. I fall right in the middle. I'm not in either group of people. Uh, in fact, I'll say it like this from the first time I read the interview of, of Sony's weeks ago, the first time I read that interview, there was never ever a thought in my head, not even for a second that we were actually going to get 8k games. Okay. So just before I go any deeper with this, cause I, I might go on a little bit of a rant here. We are not getting 8K games. That's not happening. There's not going to be 8K video games on this next generation of consoles. Maybe in 8 to 10 years when the consoles are very near end of life or whatever, but we're not getting 8K games on the consoles. That's not happening. Both Sony and Microsoft were very careful to say 8K quote, air quotes, capable. 8K capable. Okay, time out. I want to let you hear this gun. It's very loud. We have taken the lead. And I don't know how this becomes a headshot here, this guy. I'm not really sure, but. So we're not getting 8K games, guys. We're not getting them. That's not how this works. Okay? The 8K capable thing is basically from both of them the same thing. And the only reason Microsoft mentioned it was because Sony mentioned it. And they don't want to be seem like their console is weaker. But here's the reality, okay? This generation, both companies had to come out with a 4K box later because their originals did not support 4K, which is the new resolution. Back in 2013, 4K TVs cost $5,000. Okay, they didn't think it was going to be a thing. And then it became a thing. And they had to both create consoles to support 4K because they couldn't support 4K. That was the issue. So this time around, 8K is not saying there's going to be 8K games. That is 100% not what they're saying. The 8K is to show us how future-proof these consoles are going to be. The 8K is to say, hey, we're... We're, we're making this so future-proof that in five years, six years, when 8K starts to take over, you're not going to have to buy a new box. And I would I would bet a lot of money that... This is not confirmed, okay, guys? But I would bet a lot of money that the only, the only thing we're getting, 8K, is 8K video support. Much like the Xbox One S, 
supports 4K video, and that's it. It does not support 4K gaming. In fact, it can't even do 1080p gaming, but it supports 4K video, 4K Netflix, 4K YouTube. So when 8K comes to YouTube and when 8K comes to Netflix, you will be able to watch that on the console. That's what they mean by 8K, not games. Okay, it's extremely important that you understand that because you're going to be deceived. So the two camps that there are is there's the casual gamer camp. People who are saying, whoa, 8K, I don't even have a 4K TV yet. Like, I don't care about 8K. Like, that's stupid. I don't want to buy that. And then there's the really high-end camp, which are like PC gamers, and they say, this is retarded. There's no way you're actually getting 8K resolution. Like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Like, this is a, a farce. Like, they're lying to you. Like, this is dumb. And so both sides are pissed about it. Both sides. Because neither of them understand what they're talking about. So just so you guys... However many of you watch this, whether it's five or like the usual 20 to 25 people, the 20 to 25 of you, if I could reach 20 to 25 of you and let you know that you're not going to get 8K games next generation, the 8K is strictly for video and it also won't be relevant and won't even matter for several years, that's all you need to know. This console is going to be doing 4K60 on virtually every game, okay? Now, developers don't have to choose 60 frames a second, so they can still run at 30 frames per second, and a lot of developers still will. That's guaranteed. But, this console is capable of doing 4K60 on virtually any game, no matter how ambitious. So, that's good for all of us, because we're all going to get ridiculously high-quality, high-fidelity games. Okay? So... Here's what we know for both, okay? They're both Zen 2 architecture. We don't know how many cores. We don't know how many threads. We don't know the frequency, the processor speed. We don't know the graphics. We don't know the GPU. We, or we know the GPU is Navi, but we don't know how many teraflops. We don't know how fast it is. We don't know any of that. We also don't know RAM. We have no idea how much RAM. What kind of RAM? Uh, we know, so we know that they're both going to be Zen 2, and they're both going to be Navi GPUs. Uh, they both have SSDs. They both are, quote, 8K, quote, capable. Uh, they both are talking about ray tracing. Uh, Microsoft has gone so far as to say theirs will be hardware accelerated. Sony has not said that, but they have said they're going to do some form of ray tracing. Uh, Sony has said they're going to do 3D audio. Uh, Microsoft has not said that they're going to do that. Uh, they both have confirmed they're going to be using SSDs. And they both have confirmed that the console will be capable of 120 hertz or 120 frames per second output. Uh, the un uh, well, only other thing is Microsoft said uh, that it, they will support variable fresh rate technology. So, other than that, everything, and I mean everything other than that, is speculation. It just is. That's all that can be confirmed at this point. So, of course, speculation is going wild right now. And I just want, again, if I could just reach 20 to 25 of you that are watching this, just please keep your expectations in check. Um, if you do some research on the technology... And you do some research on that kind of stuff, you can sort of formulate your own opinion on what's going to happen. Um, to be realistic, we're probably going to see, uh, you know, the consoles clocked fairly low. You know, may maybe as high as 3 gigahertz, maybe as high as maybe mid 3 gigahertz for some period of time. But the issue with consoles is they have to keep them very um, cool. They have to keep them cool. They have to keep them quiet. So if you run more processor speed through there that runs up the heat that runs up the power that runs up the fan and then you have to run the fan higher makes it hotter makes it louder so like they're trying to keep it you know relatively low power for console because it's gonna be sitting under your tv so um i mean you can know that the the gpu or the cpu just by going to zen 2 even if it was clocked the same it's a 70 percent improvement you're talking excuse me 50 percent improvement for ryzen 1 or, yeah, for Ryzen 1, 5% improvement for Ryzen Plus, and 15% improvement for Ryzen 2, or Zen 2. So that's a 70% CPU performance increase at the same clock speed as what's in the current consoles. So that much we know, and we know that uh, Navi is 1.5 times as efficient power-wise as Vega, and we know that Vega is far more powerful and probably more power efficient than Polaris, which is basically what's in this console, or, or a little bit before that. So, like, we're going to get a massive upgrade. Both of these consoles are going to be fat, fat consoles, like, power-wise. I don't know about size or whatever, but they're going to be just behemoths, like, absolute beasts of consoles 
like the beastiest, probably the most powerful computer that any of you have ever owned. Obviously, I know there's, you know, people that play on PC, but these are going to be some of those powerful electronics that we've ever owned, cutting edge, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, just please take it with a grain of salt. Please, please, please. You know, there's so many channels out there, and they just, a lot of them are not reporting on things. So, all the things I just covered, those are all that we know that's been confirmed. So, like I said, it's basically a list of only, like, eight things that have been confirmed. Everything else is speculation, and people are running wild with speculation. And, you know, when a channel with 850,000 subscribers says something like, we know it's going to be a 3.2 gigahertz a base clock for the CPU, and we know it's going to have a 12 teraflop GPU, and we know that it's going to be based on Zen 3, it's like, dude, are you, what are you, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're, you, you sound foolish. Because the processor is not Zen 3. That doesn't launch until 2021 or whatever. So it's like, that's... What are you talking about, Zen 3? Are you kidding? And then, you know, we know it's going to be 3.2 gigahertz. No, we don't. We don't know any of that. There's been very little things confirmed. And I will tell you, the reason for that is because Sony and Microsoft are very closely matched. They're using virtually the same hardware. So if Sony were to come out today and say our t GPU is 10 teraflops and our CPU is 2.8 gigahertz, well, then all Microsoft has to do is wait a while and then say, well, our GPU is 12 teraflops, theirs is only 10, and our CPU is 3.2, and theirs is only 2.8. That would be it, and Sony would lose. So neither of them want to do that because if Microsoft does that, then Sony bumps their power up. They, they neither want to do that. So we're not going to get any specs for a long time. I mean, I, I would... I would be, I'll say this, I would even go so far as to say I'd be surprised if we get any actual specs in the next six months. Before 2020, if we get any actual specs, I'd be surprised. Because, you know, they're not final. And Phil Spencer even said that in this interview, which I'll link below because, honestly, phenomenal interview. This is why I'll be an Xbox guy until Phil Spencer's gone. Uh, phenomenal interview. But he said they don't even know yet. They don't even know the final specs yet. They know the CPU and the GPU and all that stuff, but like, th there's so much play for them to, cr to clock it up or down and do all sorts of different stuff with it that, that there's no way they're going to release that now. And neither is Sony. And so they're both still figuring it out. So um, we can expect a very closely, evenly matched, uh, you know, war this time around. And a lot of people are saying, <laughs> a lot of people are saying, oh, the teraflop war. They don't even want to get involved in the teraflop war anymore. That burned them last time and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, guys, you're missing it. They will absolutely engage in a teraflop war. It's just not happened yet because neither of them want to release that information. Look how late that reaction was on that Betty. I'm trying to duck under it. So they don't know yet. And they're certainly not going to release any information because it's then they, they play all their cards right away. And they, they call too soon and then they lose. So there will absolutely be a teraflop war. It's just going to be later. And there's absolutely going to be a CPU clock war. There's actually going to be absolutely be a CPU clock war and a GPU teraflop war. There will absolutely be that. It 100% will. And they'll probably, there might even be a RAM war to see who can cram more uh, RAM in there. This is, there. Nothing's different between these two. You know, the only difference is they're very similar architecture now. And so with, you know, things with like crossplay with Sony uh, or, or uh, Call of Duty, I mean, that's going to really drive it to the point where, like, it might not matter as much. I think this will be the first generation where it's so evenly matched that it might not matter which console you have. And if you can play with your friends with the games that are big and, and you know, popular, then why would you not get one or the other based on your controller preferences or just your, you know, ooh, excuse me, your brand loyalty. So, I don't know. But anyway, most balanced consoles we're ever going to have, for sure. Uh, well, at least for now. Not maybe ever, but. Um, okay, well, let me know what you guys think. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for bearing with me through this really long video. I will see you the next time.